If you're into Warhammer 40,000 like I am, you probably have your favourite Space Marine chapter. Some people like Imperial Fists, some boring people like Ultramarines, and if you're really into dogs, then your favourite is probably Space Wolves. But my favourite Space Marine chapter is a little bit different. I mean, it's not, it's, it's Ultramarines as well, surprise. Since I was a sprightly wee lass, I remember being obsessed with a very bright and colourful chapter steeped in mystery called the Rainbow Warriors. Mm. Whilst I don't have an army of rainbow warriors yet, I've essentially painted one in every single shape and size that I can find in the 40k universes. From really big McFarlane scale space marines, really small old hammer, to the teeny tiniest of epic scale space marines. If it exists, I've got a rainbow warrior in it. And in this video, I really want to share with you everything I love about the rainbow warriors from the corkboard-esque lore deep dives to the painting side of things. So hopefully you'll be inspired to maybe join me on this really weird niche adventure that is loving Rainbow Warriors. So I think this video is going to be a little bit of a mishmash. Mishmash? Mishmash? <laughs> this video is going to be a bit of a weird one. It's going to be part painting video and part me just spitballing some stuff about the lore that I just really find interesting. So let's get comfy, let's do some painting, and let me tell you about one of Warhammer 40,000's best kept secrets, the Rainbow Warriors. Rainbow Warriors. So, who are the Rainbow Warriors? Well, let's have a little bit of a Warhammer history lesson, because the Rainbow Warriors have been controversial since day one. They were first mentioned in Rogue Trader, Warhammer 40k's original and first rulebook released in 1987. And whilst they didn't have a whole lot behind them, what we did get was a name, a profile picture which showed us what they looked like, and a mysterious picture depicting some kind of battle, but more on that later. And of course, in classic Games Workshop style, the Rainbow Warriors were named after niche political and social commentary of the time. In 1985, just two years before the release of Rogue Trader, a Greenpeace ship named the Rainbow Warrior was sank by the French intelligence agency in an operation called Operation Satanique. Which I think is pretty cool. Not so much the ship sinking, but Satanique. Like, oh, Satan. Satan. Tragically, this bombing operation ended in the sinking of the ship and the loss of a single life. Now, beyond the unfortunate Greenpeace incident, the term Rainbow Warrior actually dates back to around the 1960s and the Church of America. You can look into the origins of the term Rainbow Warrior in connection to the church if you like, but I'm going to refer to it as um, Indigenous American fake lore. Whether or not this is once again Games Workshop deciding to look at that and do a bit of social commentary about it, or they just think the term Rainbow Warrior was cool, I don't know. The only thing that I can think of, which may have some tension connection to indigenous American folklore itself is actually the Rainbow Warriors chapter symbol, which is depicted as a bird's wing with a lightning bolt coming out of it. I think that this could be paying a little bit of homage to the mythical creature, the Thunderbird, which is present in a lot of indigenous American folklore. And I just think that's pretty cool. At least they got something right. I think it's quite nice. And I like the chapter symbol. I think it's pretty. With all that real world stuff said and done, now we can get into the fun bit, which is what lore exists in Warhammer 40,000 for these mysterious rainbow warriors. So, in the vast and expansive canon that is Warhammer 40,000, what do we know about the Rainbow Warriors? Well, it turns out not a lot. They first appeared inside of Rogue Trader, in that iconic double page spread that we all know and love, and they're cited as being a successor chapter of the Ultramarines. Hence all the blue, I guess. They're not boring though, don't click off the video. <laughs> they're fine, they're good. They hail from a lesser known planet called Prism, which again, I think is a not so subtle nod to their kind of rainbow theme theming so far. But apart from these pretty bare-bone facts, not a lot else is known about the Rainbow Warriors, their planet, their history, or their legacy in the galactic wars that are Warhammer 40,000. Now, a lot of people would just kind of stop there, as there's bigger fish to fry in Warhammer lore, right? There is rich history that spans thousands of years concerning all these other chapters and their deeds and their wars and their characters. Why would we care about this little space marine chapter that got mentioned once in Rogue Trader and never again, right? You're wrong. You're wrong. You're incorrect. You'd be 
you'd be you'd be dead to think so. I kill you. And maybe you'd be right too, and maybe you'd continue your Warhammer journey free of thoughts about those silly little rainbow warriors mentioned once in that very old book. However, there are some little scraps and hints here and there in Warhammer publications which keep me wondering who the Rainbow Warriors are and where are they now? Rainbow Warriors. So I feel like I need to make a pretty big like crack lore warning right now because everything I'm about to say is totally my own speculation based on not a lot of evidence. I have a mad imagination and too much time to hyperfixate when I'm painting, so I come up with stuff like this. If you have your own theories about Rainbow Warriors, where they come from, or I've missed something really cool, please put it down in the comment section. I'd love to read it because I'm always trying to expand this crack lore into something a little bit more cohesive. Give me more of your crack lore. <laughs> Give me that crack lore. Is YouTube gonna ban the word crack? crack. <laughs> crack. <laughs> Either way, tell me in the comments, let me know. Anyway, the first thing that kind of makes me go, huh, about the Rainbow Warriors is that bit of art I alluded to earlier, which is the one in Rogue Trader. It's actually one of the only pieces of in-world Rainbow Warrior art that we have, and it shows Brother Vermilion getting his face absolutely blasted off by one Sister Sin. Nice. Nice. Again, let's all remember that Rogue Trader was a very long time ago, and such things like Inquisitor, Obi-Wan, Sherlock, Clouseau being totally fine and viable as a character, and some of the more kind of like on-the-nose social-political commentary has kind of been retconned since those times, so we can't take all oh, 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 cannot be taken now as super serious in lore fact, because it's sort of been retconned since then, unfortunately. I miss Obi-Wan Sherlock Clouseau. But correct me if I'm wrong, when I see a sister of battle shooting someone in the face, I kind of go, eh, not so much of a good guy, right? Like, he's a bad guy. Sister of Battles, they're the good guys, good guys, they're the good guys, the good guys. But I thought that the Rainbow Warriors were the proud sons of Gilliman, Ultramarines themselves, the goodest of the good guys. Well, perhaps not. And one piece of evidence which I like to look at, which may point in the direction of them not just being sunshine and rainbows, is this map here. What you see here is the homeworld of the Rainbow Warriors prism, but underneath it there is something interesting, a big fat record deleted. We love to see it. We just love to see it. Fills my heart with joy. <laughs> Due to these in-world things like maps and documents usually being written from the point of view of those working within the Imperium under the godly light of the Emperor himself, we we see things like record deleted and in our heads we know that that is a big red flag that maybe these guys ain't such good guys after all. This kind of thing reminds me of everyone's favourite Warhammer 40,000 mystery, the redacted Primarchs and their mysterious legions. They're gone from history because we're not supposed to see them. But why? What did Brother Vermilion and his group of Technicolor dreamboats do? In the same way that I think a lot of really good and effective horror, sci-fi and weird fiction is written, and similarly to how I think that the hidden Primarchs and their mysterious legions are written into the Warhammer 40,000 lore, I think that this answer is entirely up to you, the reader or the viewer. However, I do want to bring up just another thing which makes me a little bit suspicious. I want to draw your attention to this transfer sheet. This transfer sheet made for the game system Aeronautica came out a couple of years ago and it includes a very mysterious chapter symbol. This chapter, however, isn't cited as being Rainbow Warriors, no no. They're the Death Strike Marines. Now, you may be wondering, who are the Death Strike Marines? Oh. They look a bit familiar, don't they? The Deathstrike Marines are a successor chapter of the Imperial Fists, which bear a striking resemblance to our Rainbow Warriors. And to add mystery to conspiracy, they are cited as having a grudge against the Ultramarines for them destroying one of their brother chapters. So another Space Marine chapter who share an almost identical colour scheme, chapter symbol, and even heraldry to the Rainbow Warriors, who are cited as bearing a grudge against the very chapter the Rainbow Warriors come from because of a mysterious disappearance of their brother chapter. With all this in mind, perhaps the Rainbow Warriors didn't simply disappear. Another big crack lore warning, by the way. 
through all the horrible and excruciating agonies that the Imperium of Mankind and its people have had to endure, it doesn't seem outside of the realm of possibility that its super soldiers would be repurposed and perhaps recycled. What if there was a way to wipe the memories of these smaller chapters which had perhaps started to show some warning signs and turn them into something else completely, and someone else completely? We can start to imagine the Rainbow Warriors as these memoryless husks who are rebuilt to suit the needs of whatever chapter wants them or perhaps bids the most to have them. They would live in this kind of state of disarray, being unsure of who they were, their history, and what the future held for them. This is a theory which I've seen floated around in some very small circles online, and whilst it doesn't 100% line up to what I like to think about Rainbow Warriors, I still think it's super, super cool. I do, however, think that when it comes to the Rainbow Warriors, there is a lot of confusion and uncertainty attached to what remains of a human soul, and that would definitely attract the attention of certain powers which reside in the warp. Perhaps you've already jumped the lore canyon and come to this conclusion yourself, but in my head it is not too far a stretch to connect the Rainbow Warriors to Chaos, and in particular the forces of Zinch. Now, sure, I'm pretty biased when it comes to Zinch and its themes of like rainbows and crystals and bright colors and light, but I can totally see how you could make this work for the Rainbow Warriors. When I'm painting my own Zinch miniatures or imagining the realm of Zinch in general, I tend to sway towards these bright, magical colors, always shifting, always changing, very prismatic, very crystalline, and this is all backed up in the Zinch lore. This is lore accurate Zinch. I imagine it to be impossible changing bright colors all the time. Wonderful. Which brings me on to what is definitely my favorite piece of Rainbow Warrior lore. Rainbow Warrior lore. It's a small passage which comes from a short story called War in the Museum written by Robert Rath, and in it it's revealed that Traz in the Infinite, everyone's favorite Necron, has in his vast collection a Rainbow Warrior. Because of course he does. Trazen took them lower, and they saw strange plasma discharges, sunbright bolts dancing across the spectrum of colors, matching the vertical stripes on the Space Marines' helms. A captain raised a crystalline power sword that shimmered with the iridescence of an oil slip. So whilst the words Rainbow Warrior are never explicitly mentioned in this passage, it's pretty obvious who they're talking about. I mean, come on, it's a pretty big hint. They've got the blue armor, rainbow vertical stripe, prismatic weird plasma power sword, and yeah, you get the picture, and so do I. Plasma in the worlds of Warhammer 40,000 are typically described as being not very many colors. You've got red for the bad guys, blue for the good guys, and I think occasionally green for someone, someone gets green, congratulations. But prismatic and colorful plasma and power weapons? That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound very ultramarine -y at all. It doesn't sound very kosher, does it? Well, no, and there may actually be a reason for that. Throughout this period, the majority of the Thousand Suns Legion was lost to the galaxy, and their fate would not be known until some time later. Nevertheless, rumors lingered of smaller groups fighting across the Imperium at locations as far-flung as Prism, Kral, Logan's World, and Yamnan, seemingly on both sides of the Loyalist Traitor Divide, and frequently in the company of other orphaned forces, including Black Shield's elements. What we just read there was part of the Horus Heresy book Retribution, and isn't that interesting? Now, mentions and references of the planet Prism are pretty rare, which makes me believe that anything that is mentioned in the lore is done on purpose and for a reason. And given Rainbow Warrior's love for crystalline colors, their affiliation with bright blue armor, and their mysterious background, one could possibly come to the conclusion that the Rainbow Warriors are descendants from Loyalist Thousand Sons. So, whether you think the Rainbow Warriors stayed loyal until the end, got rebranded into a more Imperium-friendly chapter, or merely got blasted off the face of the universe for their misdeeds, their lore is entirely up to you, as many good things in Warhammer are. And with that all said and done, you are now as caught up on Rainbow Warrior lore as I am. Um, again, I don't think I know everything about Rainbow Warriors, and I'm really interested to read your comments on this video. 
I've been starved for comments for too long and I'm really interested to see what you have to say. Do you have your own Rainbow Warrior lore? Have you heard something I've said that's inspired you to think up something that maybe I missed or, or anything like that? Please put it in the comments so I can read it. But until then, let's have a little look at the miniature I've been painting to go alongside this video because as well as being very excited to talk about Rainbow Warriors, I'm also very excited to show you how I love to paint them, because it's a little bit different from how the source material maybe portrays them. Sue me, I don't care, I love them. <laughs> also, I want to make it very clear that I've not been painting this whilst I've been talking to you, that would be silly. Um, I've spent like three days <laughs> painting him, and maybe in the future I'll paint Space Marines quicker for another video, but for now, I took some time to paint him. Don't judge me. <laughs> For my Rainbow Warriors, I tend to make the armor a little bit lighter and a bit more on the blue-green scale than what's described in the original source material. They're described as having quite dark blue armor, and I like that, but I like to keep it more saturated and a bit more blue-green, maybe to tie into that Thousand Suns lore that we heard before. For the chest Aquila, it's described as being yellow in a lot of the source material. I go for white. I don't really know why, I kind of just did it on one Space Marine one day and it stuck because it stands out really nicely. I don't know why I went for white, again, <laughs> sorry. On top of that, one of the biggest differences between the way I paint my Rainbow Warriors and the source material is how heavily I go on like the extra bits. Um, I add in red stop signs on the knee. I don't know why. I didn't even really know I was doing that until I did it. I can't remember if I saw it somewhere first or if I made it up. Either way, they've got these big red knee pads and occasionally I mix it up with putting in red shoulder, not shoulder pads. What are these called? Arm knees. Arm knees. Elbows. <laughs> Elbows. I like to give them these big red stop signs on their knees and also occasionally on their elbow pads as well. Sometimes I mix it up and I'll just do one elbow pad as red, sometimes I give it the stripe, sometimes I don't. I like to mix it up as some kind of like chapter heraldry something or other. I can make up something for that later, such as homebrew, I guess. The other main way that I differentiate maybe from the source material and other people painting rainbow warriors is that I like to put that big rainbow on their legs as well. And I think this is a bit of a taboo in Space Marine heraldry rules. I don't really know. I should know. <laughs> but I like to put that stripe on their legs as well, just to tie it in on that area and a little bit on his backpack as well. But apart from that, I say apart from that, there's quite a few differences, but that's just the way I like to paint them. I think they're really pretty. <laughs> On top of all those kind of heraldry things, something I love doing is adding a load of rogue tradery flourishes to the miniature. Things like tally marks, poorly spelled words like kill and murder, kind of free-handed all over their armor, as well as things like checkers. It, it just makes it look really old school, and I love to kind of put those things all over my Rainbow Warriors to kind of date them a bit and bring them back to that old source material. Another thing that I really enjoy painting when I'm painting Space Marines is their weapons, but unfortunately I kind of struggled with his plasma weapon. I really wanted to do the otherworldly multicolored plasma described in War at the Museum, and I really wanted to blend the plasma into a few colors. I tried to do like purple into pink, because those are not commonly seen in plasma, so I thought they'd be great starts, but it didn't really work out. I switched it to pink and repainted the gun in the end, and I quite like where it ended up, but eventually one day I'd really love to try out doing a lore accurate plasma rainbow warrior weapon where it's a real blend of colors really bright a super like bright rainbow plasma i'm really excited to do that maybe that'll be another video one day but not today <laughs> I am, however, quite pleased with how his power weapon turned out, his big sword. I really tried hard to kind of reference the source material with that oil slick S sword, and I really like the lighter colors that I used as well. I think it looks like a prismatic crystal weapon, which is exactly what I wanted. I'm really excited to show you how I did that. So as always with Space Marines, you have a few choices on how you want the end result to look, and you could absolutely leave your Rainbow Warrior here. He looks quite clean and parade ready, all that free handing and stuff hasn't been chipped into at all, but you know me, 
I'm a girl that likes a dirty space marine. <laughs> I like my battle boys to look like they've seen some battle, I don't know. So what I'm gonna do here is just add a couple last finishing touches, like some dirty drips using Rhinox hide, some little chips here and there, highlight those chips with a little bit of a lighter colour to make them really pop, and to make this space marine look like he's seen a little bit of war. And what is not optional, in my opinion, is of course the goblin green base. I absolutely love goblin green bases and um, you know base your miniature however you want to make you happy but what makes me happy is a goblin green miniature. Maybe it's not the best choice for this miniature, maybe he would look cooler if I put him on some stone with some crystals, I don't know. I am. Um, I just really love a goblin green base and honestly my serotonin is my top priority right now so <laughs> this video has mostly been a lore video and less so a painting video, but I have filmed painting this miniature start to finish and I'm really excited, like I said, to show you how I painted him and maybe to encourage you to paint your own. So if you want to see how I painted this miniature start to finish in full, I'm gonna put that tutorial on my Patreon. And yeah, I'd be really excited if you checked it out and followed it and then showed me your Rainbow Warriors. I'd love to see them. On my Patreon, you'll also find other really fun painting content and you'll also get to see some of my videos earlier than everyone else so you can point out how much of a goober I am ahead of everyone else on YouTube. <laughs> Who doesn't want early access to calling me a goober? Who doesn't want that? And that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and thank you for being rogues. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!